Welcome to Marketecture, where you can get smart fast with in-depth interviews of leading technology executives. I'm Ari Paparo. I'm joined today by Samantha Jacobson, the Chief Strategy Officer for The Trade Desk. Samantha, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for having me on, Ari. So everyone knows The Trade Desk, uh, probably one of the most important companies in the ad tech ecosystem, um, and it would probably take more than a quick 45 minutes to go into everything The Trade Desk offers. So we're going to deep dive on Galileo and UID, or UID2, which are um, all around uh, consumer identity and resolution of identity and things like that. Um, and uh, hopefully it should be an interesting conversation for our listeners. Um, so when did you announce Galileo? It was pretty recent, right? It, it was. We announced it at January of this year. Great. And, and so what is it? You bet. So Galileo is meant to make our buyers' lives as easy as possible. And we want to make sure that they can harness the power of their first party data to do that. So what we've done is, you know, historically, there have been many hops across the ad tech ecosystem. I may have a CRM file and apply one sense of identity. I may then want to overlay a different third party asset, which may use a different identity graph, and then choose to activate that in an ecosystem and then need to measure to understand the campaign results. With Galileo, we've tried to streamline all of that to make it as connected and seamless as possible so that advertisers can upload data directly into Trade Desk, keyed off their identifier of choice. So that could be UID2. They could choose to send in their email addresses. They could choose to send in a different ID space. And we are then able to overlay data from our entire data marketplace, keyed off of that same ID space, and then use our Identity Alliance graph to make sure that they're maximizing scale and push out to downstream ecosystems. And then most importantly, it's not a black box where the data stops there. We make sure that we also provide that data back either to the advertiser or to their third-party provider of choice across the large suite of offerings we have in our measurement marketplace to make sure they can understand performance in the terms that they want in a transparent and easy-to-access way. Oh, fascinating. So uh, I think one of the things that makes it a little bit hard to get your head around this is that it sounds like you're crossing a lot of what were previously considered um, different segments of the of the space. All, uh, like clearly, there's an onboarding component, and traditionally people would think about you know Live Ramp as the onboarding partner, and then you have a graph component, and then you have this, uh, and you, you're distributing the ID. So I, I kind of want to spend a little time trying to understand each aspect of that and how it's different than what has come before or what might be available at a different DSP. Um, uh, so let's have onboarding first. Um, so you said you can on the customer can onboard their data by email or by uh, a another ID that's already keyed on. Um, so was that not available previously? Did you have to use another provider like a live ramp? Um, what we found is that there were some pipes in, but we want to make sure that we are going to wherever advertisers are choosing to store their data. And mm -hmm. so you'll see a much wider breadth of offering for those integrations, whether it's Adobe, Salesforce, Snowflake, Habu, or LiveRamp or Experian. And so we want the buyers to be able to choose where they want to house their data and not feel like they have to hop out to a different entity in order to be able to upload it. Okay, so it, with a partner like uh, Experian is kind of an interesting one in that list. Um, the Experian ID is native to Galileo, so the data that's being onboarded from Experian doesn't need to transfer IDs. Is that is that what I'm hearing? Well, we, so we have a partnership in place with Experian to leverage their identity, and so a part a buyer could either choose to send out data keyed off of their email address, depending on mm -hmm. what's housed there or they could push data into Trade Desk keyed off of their Experian IDs. Right. And then we also have the ability to work with Experian to make sure that we're preserving that level of integrity for the data that's being pushed into the platform. Right. Um, email makes a lot of sense as well because uh, the social platform is really innovated around using email, hashed emails as a targeting technique. Um, it's kind of surprising a little bit that it's it's been so long where that um, in which most of the DSPs don't allow sort of native email uploads. Um, has that proven to be popular with your clients? Um, my, my personal experience has been that clients are trying to make sure they're leveraging their first party data as effectively as possible. And it's a surprisingly new space for a lot of them. You know, historically, some of those departments have been separate within those organizations um, or they've 
uploaded it and not known how to maximize that data. So a lot of the social ecosystems, partners upload, they say, hey, send me your data. And then it turns into a bit of a black box. They overlay different data assets or choose which media to buy and then say, don't worry, I'll report out for you on just what a great job I did buying media on your behalf and how well your campaign did. Um, And so from our perspective, it is an identifier that many are choosing to use. I also think that as there's a greater focus on privacy, especially in the United States, right? We've got nine different states now that have different state legislation. Um, We want to make sure that consumers have choice and transparency. And I think creating that dialogue with consumers is more important to brands now than it's ever been because they recognize the need to have that direct relationship. And because of that, emails become even more important than it had been previously. 